there is it's a simple topic but it is very very important a mind to build a mind to build and we all know about Nehemiah and we read about him and this building come because of Nehemiah he was serving the king he was committed to the king and the king enjoy Nehemiah around him I think Nehemiah have a little smile or some countenance that um, draw the king close to him so I would say he was a special servant to the king and it come to a time when there was a little countenance of a Nehemiah. The king noticed it, but he didn't say nothing. And I'm saying it my way now, or I'm understanding it. I remember when, when I was in America, I didn't go down, go home for a while. And I did left my youngest son with me down there. And we on the correspond through letter. Those time phone, phone, phone wasn't so frequent like now so i use letter to correspond with him i write the letter as if i'm sitting right beside him and this is how he was grown he grow without my present but he grow with my instruction and i remember one day one of my sisters said to me brother what are you gonna do your son just looking at his picture and crying and just crying like that and i don't know what to do and i when she talked to me, I was smiling and everything. And after we hung up the phone, those times there are phone, phone booed in Jamaica where it could go and call me here. When I hung up the phone, you could hear my voice away down there scream and cry so hard. Because one of the things that come in my mind, yes, is with my parent but i'm wondering if somebody is abusing him and all different things come in my mind and i cry so hard i said this to say that tonight that i can just imagine nehemiah he got a message that the wall's been torn down he got a message that something not going on right there in the church something that he was in order is not is now out of order and my god the man burdened down man he burdened down he becomes so burdened down i i doubt if he get good sleep i doubt if he get a good meal to eat proper meal because his mind becomes so burdened down and i'm using this tonight to talk to us as believer because sometimes uh we don't understand the calling of God. Sometimes we don't understand the assignment that we are in. Sometimes we, we, we know the assignment, but we don't take notice of the assignment. And sometimes we tend to have a layback spirit. And it seems like some anytime we have this layback thing in us, it's always that something go wrong that should not be. And Nehemiah serving the king over and over, the king have to stop him one day and say, come on, man. Come on, Nehemiah. What's going on? What's going on, Brother Murray? What's going on, Pastor Give? What's going on, Deacon or Sister Give? I see that you're not the type of person you used to be there's no smile it seems like there's no joy is there something that is going on in your in that i want that you need to talk about oh. and you can just imagine me my turn to the king and say the wall's been tear down thing is not like when i was there and i wish if you could give me some time to go and take care of it my god and church of god i want to say tonight that many of us we know our assignment but we try to defer 
some people know it they 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 try to hide themselves because of what others may say um some is not approved by it the lord speak to you and somebody have to go through details how the lord speak to you where were you what did the lord say and all different things would happen i want the church to understand too that even the low, lowest of person in the congregation, the Lord can talk to them. My God, you you you, you remember Samuel and and Eli? Eli was a priest, but look at the little boy, and God talked to him. And while Nehemiah was there and request from the king to let me go and take care of the business. He have the work of God at heart. I often say this to people that you don't have to can be a preacher. You don't have to can be a singer that can hold some high notes. It's not about the professional way. I'm not going against the, the professional way, but it's not about that. What is when you can do something from the heart, from the depth of the heart concerning God, that God will get the glory out of it. You are doing something that is real. You don't have to can pray like somebody can pray. Some people can start to pray now at nine o'clock. They're still praying. 10 o'clock, they're still praying. And maybe your few words can be just few words, but it can touch the heart of God. It can reach somewhere that nothing else ever reached and something great can come out of it. You know why? Because God is getting the glory and sign is following what you do. So Nehemiah get the opportunity to go down back to his his place and to do the work as a matter of fact he went there first to check out the place and to see what everything is going on and then he come back with his men and he start to make plans to rebuild hallelujah glory to god and church of god when things need to rebuild it means that there have to be clearance. You have to move some stuff. You have to get some things out of the way and to put back things in order to get it plumb, to get it straight. My God, to get it level. You, there are some things that have to be moved. But when you look into this chapter four, there is always hindrances when you have a heart for the work of God. If the environment don't start in your home, it will start in a workplace. It will start on the street. It will start with your next door neighbor. But somewhere down the line, some endurance will come up to try to defeat the purpose. But you as a believer must know for yourself who you are, what God is saying to you, where he is sending you, what he is telling you to do. You must know that and always stay focused and not to amen lose focus of what god is saying to you as he speak to you you must listen what he said there's a song that say his voice that makes a difference when he speak he release my troubled mind and it's the only voice i knew that can make a difference and i'll follow one day at a time if you notice with nehemiah nehemiah didn't hear like a voice, but there was a burden on him. When he get the message, there was a burden on him. And you and I can, uh, can identify that tonight when the Lord will say something to you. You hardly can sleep. If you get a dream and the dream is just plain like that, you hardly can go back to sleep. If you go into church and, 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 and there's something not right, it's, it, it don't rest right in your spirit. You cannot be happy. And this was the feeling of Nehemiah. He know how important the gates are. He know how important the walls are. And because of that, amen, he know the importance of when, amen, the gates are on, there's no intruders. When there's a wall around, nobody can break in as they wanted to. But all because of everything breakdown, people can do 
anything intruders come in hallelujah and there was these two men and when Sambal had heard that we build the wall he was angry he took up great indignation and mocked the jews look here mock the jews you will stand up today and say you're a child of God and you're going to do something for the work of God. People dare to mock you, to jeer you. People will devalue you and put you to the lowest and write you up and think that whatever you're doing, oh God, it, 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 it is it tasteless. And if you listen what the enemy is doing while you're doing the work of God, you will never get the victory if you continue listening. You must listen to the voice of God. Hallelujah. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? <laughs> will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? You must question the ask. Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? So you see what I'm saying now? They are saying negative things. When you accept the Lord, I was telling a young lady, amen, and she feel like she's not beautiful. And I say, look here, you say you're not beautiful. When you get saved, when you get baptized, you're going to see how much men start to call after you. You're going to see how much they rush at you. They're going to wonder where this young lady was, where this beautiful lady was. In the sight of them, no, you are not beautiful. But when you accept the Lord, you are beauty. God turn everything and beautify you with salvation. And this was what some ballad do. He discriminate the people of God. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him. And he said, even that which they build, if a fox come up, he shall even break down their, their wall. I remember, I only can read about the sly hole fox. You all, some of you that, you know, time, you, because these children don't know about this story, but I used to read about the sly old fox. He was a thief in like an animal. He, he would go into the coop. Or he get in it, I don't know. he get into the coop and he would steal those chicken. And I didn't see a fox personal until when I go to England. And I saw in the night I was driving, I see the lot of highs them looking. I was asking them, what is that? And this is a fox. I couldn't see the animal, but I see the highs them in the night. But I remember in the day I saw a fox and I said, oh, no wonder they call him this sly old fox because he was not like of a body like the, like a dog, but he's cunning. <laughs> He's not strong like the dog, but he's cunning. And these people, they devalue the people of God in such a way that they say that even if a fox come up against the fence, huh? even if a fox come up, he will break their, break their stone wall. And I want to say tonight, when you have a mind to build, these are the discouraged words that will come to you. You're not a preacher. You're not a teacher. You're not a singer. You're not a moderator. You're not a reader. You cannot read. You cannot put your words together. But nothing must beat when you have the mind to build, the mind to build the work of God, the mind, amen, that nobody can defeat the purpose that is in you. You must hold on to your integrity. And that's why I love the three Hebrew boys. They say, even if God don't deliver us, we will not bow. And you must have that confidence within yourself. As I often tell people, do not help people to destroy yourself. People do that. Yes, I know long time I'm ugly. Yes, I know long time I'm poor. No, long time that I this. Do not listen. You may hear, but do not listen. Do not swallow. 
because the power that God puts in you is greater than what is out there. The scripture said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's greatness in you. And once you have that mindset to build, once you have that mindset to the calling of God, to the work of God, once you have the mindset to do what is laid in your heart, the purpose can never be defeated. If you notice what Nehemiah do, yes, they write him letter, come down here. But he said, why should I come down and the work cease? Because he have an assignment. He's an assignment. The burden that is on him, he, he cannot left him until when he accomplish whatever was laid on his heart. And this is all God is looking at us tonight. Yes, young man, God is looking. Let me say a little bit about a young man because uh, uh, we, we find out today that we have a lot of men that lay back in the ministry. We need some more Nehemiah. Hallelujah. We need men more like Nehemiah. That can say, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Some of our men will say they get the calling on their life. It's on them. But they are saying, Lord, I don't get married yet. Lord, I want a little wife first. I need a good job. God, if I didn't look to room, I want to build first before I start to do your work. But God is saying, no is the acceptable time. No is the time of salvation. And you don't want a wife that will discourage you from the work of God. There's a question that asks in one of the songs, would you do service for Jesus the King? And when you have a mind to build, you will do service for the Lord. And so young man, if you're on the line tonight and there's a yearning in you, hallelujah, open up your spirit, open up your heart, open up your life, Open up everything about you and lift your hand to God and say, God, I surrender to you. Use me for your glory. Touch me, Lord. Help me and bring me through that I can able to do what you require of me to do. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So Nehemiah started to pray here, O oh Lord, in verse 4. Oh God, for we are despised. You hear? When you stand up for God to build, when you have a mind to build, you'll be despised. People look on you from head to toe. People going to tell you that you're not T.D. Jakes and you're not Joyce Myers and all them big people. They're going to call out those big names. But dear, you to to, to, to listen to them. Be who you are to be. Stay in your lane and allow God to bring you through the process. Hallelujah. And there, and turn their reproach upon their own. God, Nima is telling you to turn their own reproach. You, you, Lord, you don't hear what they said? You didn't hear what they said about us? You don't hear how oh, they are discriminating us, Lord. But that didn't stop Nehemiah. When you read all these stories about Nehemiah, we would see that there none of them could have stopped him to do what he wants to do or what was laid upon his heart. Somebody would say tonight, don't matter go to church. Don't matter go on the line tonight. It's just few of them on it, man. Don't matter go on it. But God could be sitting right the next side beside you and want you to go on the line because he has something for you to do. Hey, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So verse 5 says, And come not their iniquities, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. When you have a mind to build, people will provoke you. People will discourage you. People will underestimate you. People will look down on you. And people will even tell you that you're not a Christian. God is not talking to you. You're only pretending. And Nehemiah hear all these insultive words. But the Bible says he had a mind to build. What are you saying to me, Pastor? I am saying whatever the Lord laid on your heart to do, you should not let nobody discourage you. You should not try to please everybody when God is to be pleased. And that's what it is. And verse 6 says, so they build we the wall. So build we the wall. And all the walls were joined together unto the earth there for the people had a mind to build, a mind to work. When you have a mind to work, snow cannot stop you, rain cannot stop you, nothing will stop you. Some folks will go prayer meeting when the time is warm and nice. <laughs> Some people only go to church and make sure look outside and so on, and they go back into their bed. But there's a song that says, Art the voice of Jesus calling, who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheep away? Loud and strong, the master calling, which reward he offer be? Who will answer gladly saying, Hear my, send me, send me. And this put me in mind of Isaiah when he said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell among the people of unclean lips. And the Lord touched his tongue and purged him. And he could have said, hear my, send me, send me. And that's all you want to do. To build? That's all you want to do. Hear my Lord. Hear my. Whatever you say. Wherever you want me to go, I will go without a murmur and your footstep follow on. Can I tell somebody right near on this line tonight? God wants to use you and he's waiting on you. Yes, he's waiting on you. He's knocking at your heart so many times. And you wonder, you call the pastor, you call the sister. This thing is on my mind. Is the Lord talking to you? And he wants you to understand, is he talking to you? Remembering when Samuel run to Eli, you call me. Eli said, I didn't, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down again. And you come back again, you call me. But it was a voice of God. Listen to his voice. He's talking in your inner man. And it's for you to say, yes, Lord, here am I. Send me, send me. There's something that I've noticed with these men that they were so united together. They were of one mind, one determination. They were so united together that nothing could discourage them. The Bible say they have wounds and the, the one on working and one on, on their the, on their weapon. They were on two assignments. If the enemy come, they're going to fight. They're going to say, you ain't going to stop me from building this wall. You ain't going to stop me from building this gate. You ain't going to stop me from moving this garbage. Because I'm determined to hold out to the end. Hallelujah. 
And let me tell you, church, the church is under attack. The enemy is always angry at the church, angry at the men and women of God. And soon as he finds a loophole, he's going to attack. But when the church is in one mind, there can never be a little loophole for you to, for the enemy to come through. No wonder the scriptures in Ephesians endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. When the church is bound together in peace and in unity, there can never be a loophole for the enemy to crept in. And I'm sorry for people that go to church and don't know how to make peace. Because if Nehemiah did follow these two men, Sambalat and Tobias, he would never even move the garbage, much more to build. But because he have a determination, he have a set time. The king gave him some time that he can go and do the rebuilding and come back again. Hallelujah. And I want to say to you tonight, do not hide from the calling that God has on your life. Do not reject the calling. Do not doubt the calling. Do not waver in your mind. I wonder if it's God talking or is the devil talking. By you started to listen. Lord, if it's you, speak to me, Lord. Do it, Lord. That's all you have to do. And he will speak to you. Hallelujah. He will speak to you. Many of you on the line tonight, you can, amen, testify to this part here that many times you're challenging, Lord, because of things that your face is. And God show up. And God hear. Nothing can overcome when the church is in one frame of mind. Nothing can overcome. Nothing can get between you and the Savior when the church of the one mind. Hallelujah. There's maybe 14 of us on the line. Can you imagine if 14 of us have the same mind tonight? Uh, the enemy will have nothing to do with this line. Hallelujah. From a doubt person coming, this is all you're going to open door for him. Hallelujah. But I pray that your mind will be intact, alert, and guard. Hallelujah. Nehemiah's heart was broken. He was so sad. His countenance changed. He interceded with God. He told God his feeling. He tell God about the situation. And God heard him. If you notice what happened, the, 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 the king knew that he was a godly man. He respect him. And that is why I don't fear to tell anybody where I am. I am a seventh day church of God. I keep the Sabbath. I don't fear to tell nobody. Hallelujah. Always remember when you stand up for the work of God, for righteousness, enemy started in your life. But God is your protector. God is your keeper and is a shade of your right hand. Hallelujah. There are three things I want to show what happened with Nehemiah when they decide to build. Number one, they get the victory over their enemy. They disappoint the enemy. You see him warn them that talking about where they're going to get material from. A fox is going to do They get victory. Number two, there's hope in the Lord. Whenever you're on the service of God, there's hope. And you may not see it. You may not see how you're going to get a word. But as long as your mind set to the work of God, there is always hope. And number three, they made their prayers unto their God. They set a watchman day and night, and they started to build. 
All God is looking for is a man. Hallelujah. All he's looking for is a man. A willing man, a man with a willing heart, a godly heart, a, a God chaser. He's looking for a man with a passion. He's looking for a faithful man with a sound mind. A brave man is looking for, just as when David stand before Goliath, a little boy stand before Goliath, he's looking for a man that is brave. Willing and able, and don't even care what man want to do or say. Looking for a man with a made-up mind. Just one man can make a difference. Hallelujah. Just one man can make a difference. The scripture said that one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight. Look, one chase a thousand. Two ten thousand to fly. So when the church, when 14 of us on this line have the same mind, great things will happen. You may not be speaker, but you can read a two verses of scripture. You can sing the song. You can give a testimony what the Lord has done. And great things will happen. God is looking for one man to make a difference. A man with boldness, the spirit of boldness, anointed and full of wisdom. One of the things that I love about God is that your willingness, even if you cannot do nothing, he will use you. He can transform you and he can make you who he wants you to be. Hallelujah. Just like a John the Baptist, just like a Joshua, just like a Jeremiah, just like a Nehemiah, just like a Isaiah, just like any one of those prophets, Ezekiel or Daniel. God is looking to do the same thing with you. The question is, are you willing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you able? And it's not about being laid back. Uh, I'm going to tell somebody about it. I'm going to ask somebody. If you notice, even Abraham, Pastor, he was on this subject the other day. When the Lord tell Abraham to bring up your child and sacrifice, he didn't tell, he didn't tell Sarah. He didn't tell Sarah. When God is dealing with your heart, Amen. He, he don't even want you to have a second a, a, a thought like somebody to share with. It's you. And when he finish with you, go as he finish. Go. If he say go, go. Jesus did tell some of his disciples, let the dead bury their dead. And that is why I tell when the calling of God is a man's life, it's a burden that rests on you that will never left you. Oh, hallelujah. And this is what God wants to do such tonight, to use us for his honor and for his glory. God just wants to say, somebody say yes to the Lord. Just one man he wants. In Jeremiah, say, go there to the city and look if there's a man. Look for your final one, if you see one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just look for one for me. Just one. I need that one. I need that boy. I need that girl. I need that husband. I need, I need that father. And it's not about hiding in the garden. When you're willing, God don't even have to ask if there's anything hard for me to do. Because you should know him and you know him. That is a God that will never let you down. Can I say he's counting on you tonight? Whoever we are, he's counting on you. Just as he counted on Jonah, he's counting on you. 
He counted on Paul and he's counting on you tonight. What can I do in the service of God? And once you have that made up mind, you realize that God ready to use you. In Romans 12, verse 16, it says, be of the same mind. Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you. And in Timothy, I always say about the sound mind. When your mind is sound, God will talk to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look at the sound mind, Saul and Jonathan, they fight together in such a way that they, 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 they fight back to back. And it seemed like after they finish, it's like as well a land plow because they were together. The Bible say that when they push their sword out, it never come back in dry to them. They were fighters. And the mind that Christ wants you to have, you don't have to have 50 or 100 people to speak the word. You can sit on a bus talking and you can witness to somebody right beside you even just to offer a seat or a drink of water or a candy. You can do great things for God. Can I tell somebody now, since the, the mind and you know of a fact, there's something that you need to start to store inside of you. There's something that you need to rekindle in you. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 and, and push that wood so there can be some more flame and that burning can be in you as a child of God to go wherever the Lord wants you to go. It makes a difference when we are of one mind. It makes a difference when we are together. Just like in the of Pentecost, they were all in one mind. One mind. This God is a God that do not support wrong. But in uh, in 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 Genesis, in Genesis eleven, I'm gonna read just a few verses. And the whole world was full of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of China, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower. You hear, let us. Who stop me reach unto heaven? That's the mind they had. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Why do you think the Lord came down? <laughs> he saw the mind of these people. He saw the determination that they have. He saw that they have a made up mind and a the mind they knit together like it's only one mind. So if it was like a 10,000 people, it was like one mind, everything. Everybody say yes, everybody say yes. If one say no, everybody say no. Hallelujah. Come with me, brethren. God have to come down from the heaven to see. Yes, he's staying in heaven and see, but let me go down there and walk for myself and see what this boy doing down here. 
And when God see it, and the Lord said, "Me, all the people is one. Oh, glory to God, Jesus. The people are one. They have one mind. Bless you, man. Bless you. Oh, glory. The, the you. Lord see their mind. Bless you. You can just imagine if God come down here and look on this line and see everybody with the same mind. Something will happen. Hallelujah. And they've all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will restrain them for what they have imagined to do. Let us go down. Dear, confound their language that they may not understand one another. So God have to have a plan. When he came down there, he realized that the mind that they have to build, if he go back to heaven, trouble going to start down there. By the time he reach up there, they're going to reach right up there behind him. In my imagination. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Amen. And I'm just bring this out to let you know the importance of the mind, the unity, the togetherness. When we are on, on the same page, on the same level, great things will happen in church of God. Great things will happen in the home. Great things will happen in the church. Great things wherever you go, people will look on you and they will see God in you. They will see the spirit of God in you. Amen. And let to glorify the Father which is in heaven. And if God could pass these people with one mind, they didn't have God in mind. The only thing they have in mind is to be together. As one, and they are determined to do so. So think about the church of God now with everybody come together and say, Pastor, yes, man, we're going to spend your whole night here and we're going to worship and we're going to sing and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Nothing will ever defeat the purpose. Yes, young man. Yes, young woman. God is counting on us. And we cannot defeat the purpose. We must carry out the assignment. And we'll let God be pleased with us. God look and see the thing that they were doing. Yes, they were united, but it was the wrong thing that they were doing. So think about when the church is in one mind, lifting up the name of Jesus. Something great will happen. What is your mind tonight? Does this mean anything to you? A mind to build? A mind to build? A mind to work? Committed, dedicated, Make sacrifice. And it's not about running. It's about to stand up to the calling. Stand up to the requirement. There's a song that says, stand up, stand up for Jesus, the soldier of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. When there's a service to be done, when there's a work to be done in the, in the service of God, God is looking for willingness. Is no favorism. Is when the mind is in order, the Lord will use you for his glory. Are you willing to let the Lord use you? Are you willing to let the Lord send you? Are you willing to let the Lord fashion you and mold you and stamp his own image in you? Are you willing to sit at his feet and learn to weep and wait? 
Are you willing? Are you willing to go wherever he sends you? And if you answer yes to this, then you are part of Nehemiah's. You are part of God calling where God will use you continuously for his glory. Those who moderate, those who keep prayer meeting or in fasting, do not stop. Let that mind continue to be in you. All the hell may break loose. Keep focusing. Don't let no one discourage you. Don't let no one derail you. Listen to the Lord. And where he leads, follow him. When he leads you, he will never lead you into somewhere that you should not go. Can I tell somebody tonight? Hold on. If anyone in the line, you know, you used to serve, do service in Christ's service, and you find out that there's a layback in you, tonight is a night when you can go back to him as a prodigal son go back to his father you can do that tonight and say use me again lord i'll fail you many times but lord use me tonight wash me and cleanse me use me for your glory use me for your honor and let me tell you something you will not be ashamed because the lord hand is open wide to bring you back closer to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you tonight. As your mind is made up. To work into the service of God. In Jesus mighty name. Amen.